Welcome back everyone to part two of painting Gazgol. So next up we're going to be using Grey Seer, which is a nice base colour from the Games Workshop, one of their new range. I'm going to use this to start picking out some of the, the glyphs or the markings on Gaz. Next up, I'm going to be using Corax White. This is going to be starting to build up on the on all the glyphs, but more importantly, any of the parts that we're going to paint red later on, like the teeth, any of the parts on the shoulder pad, we're going to go in with those with the with that white because that's going to help that red pop later on. White scar was then applied to the model. So I'm going to take you through how I've done the chipping effects on Gasgol. As you can see, I've got a stippling brush here. I also use a brush that I use for dry brushing. I've also got a few tools that you can find in for green stuffing, like for sculpting. If you haven't got any, you can get any of these from like eBay. Uh, look for the dentistry tools, they're quite handy. Or if you don't want to go through that, you can also get yourself a, a toothpick or even a toothbrush as well would do the same effect. So first up, we're going to be coating the model with just plain water. Leave that to sit for a couple of, for a couple of seconds. Once the water's started loosening up the chipping effect, once you start applying the stippling brush or the toothbrush or whatever tool you're using at the time, what you'll find is the paint will start lifting off and it will go back to that previous stage of when we've done the rust effects. So as you can see now, you can start seeing the oranges and the rust colors starting to come through the carapace. Now at this stage, it's really up to you on how much you want to expose back to the rust itself. What I would suggest is, as you can see, I'm doing some bits are going to be a little bit bigger, um, but once I've done this part and a little bit later on, I'm going to be taking you through and how you fill those rust bits in, because just having the rust itself is fine, but I like to have that, that uh, raw metal underneath exposed as well. So I'll be filling in the gaps later on with some lead belcher or whatever metals that I have available to myself. Now for me, Gaz wouldn't have a clean armor. It just wouldn't be the case. And as you can tell from the model itself, it has a lot of grooves already in, 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 on his armor. So for me, I put chipping into place where I can see Gaz, where he's got into combat or into battle, where he might have need a, a Marine in the face, or if it's just where he's gone under a, a low door or just charged into a Rhino, it's just taking that, that, the chipping off of his paint and just starting to show that rust effect starting to come through that corrosion of metal uh, and then later on i'll show you once i've done the this part later on in the video i'll show you exactly how to make that chip and look more effective with using silvers and browns <laughs>
Now for the next stage, it's really important that you use a matte varnish to seal in that paint. Once we've gone past this part and you've done all the chipping, we're all over the model that you desired, um, that matte varnish is gonna seal in. So when you do do the edge highlighting or any other, add any other colors later on, what you don't want is that paint and then start removing the chipping solution and start bringing it back down to the rust. So that matte varnish is gonna lock and seal that in. Okay, so next up, we're gonna start painting the legs. Well, we, because we don't have the arms or backpack onto the model, this gives us that great opportunity to get in and actually start painting those legs. Because once the arms and the backpack on, it actually restricts on what areas we can actually get to on Gaz. So these are gonna be the three colors we're gonna be using. Run Oxide, Moon Fang, and Death Claw Brown. So we're gonna be going in with our first color, the Run Oxide Hide. Make that brown really, really strong and stand out. I gave it a good couple of thin coats. This next stage, I went in, I started adding the Moon Fang into the Rhine Oxide. So I went 50-50 Rhine Oxide with 50-50 Moon Fang Brown. Again, having that nice and watery, the like a, a glaze effect, that helped it pull those transitions in together quite nicely. Plus it gave it a nice, rich, strong color. A top tip I can give you on this to speed this process up, a hairdryer, and I did say a hairdryer, really does help the process speed things up quite nicely and you can find you can do these transitions very very quickly by just using that simple little trick So next up, I started going in with Moonfang on itself. Again, keeping to that glaze effect and building up loads and loads of layers, leaving the previous colors to where the, the shade or the shadow is gonna be on the actual model itself. Next up, I started to add the Death Claw Brown into the mix of the Moon Fang. Same process, exactly the same as before, having a glaze effect. And then just going, again, adding it to the areas where I want the, the lighter parts to be, keeping the previous color to where the shade and the shadow is gonna be. So next up, I'm gonna be going in with the Death Claw, but I'm gonna be going in with a, a thicker mix. And this is just so I can start pulling out the stitching, that, which is holding the leather trousers together. At this point, I added a little bit of white scar into the mix. This was to pull out a little bit more of the leather stitching itself, but more importantly, to pick out those final highlights that you would see upon the actual leather part of the trousers. So at this point, we're gonna start working off the groin cloth on Gazgal. So the, the colors I'm gonna be using are gonna be corn red, it's also gonna be Waz Daka red, and tusk 
score fair. Now, just to highlight that up a little bit better towards the end, I'm gonna be adding in a bit of ivory white to the mix from Vallejo model color. For the next stage, we went in with corn red and added this all over as the base coat onto the Neuencroft itself. And again, just a couple of thin, uh, thin coats. So next up, we're gonna be using the Waz Daka Red. I'm gonna be going for a really watered down mix. So if I pull the palette over, one day once we can afford extra cameras, I'll be able to show you the wet palette as well. Unfortunately, not that rich just yet. One day, one day. So what we're gonna go for next is we're gonna aim for a lot of the highlights. So around about here, we're not gonna to go too far down into, the, into there because there's still gonna be a lot of shadow. I just want to bring it up just a tad because um, I'm going to dark. I'm actually going to use another brown just to darken up underneath. Okay, so just aiming for the highlights. So what we're going to do there, I'm actually going right up to the actual crease itself, right up to the crease. So if the lights were coming down this way, all there is going to be hidden. But I'm just going to do a tad just there just to bring out that definition a little bit. Just underneath, but not too much. Um, I'm gonna leave that one there, and then just bring that just up. And then, because you still would have a light going down, down there, so you're gonna get that just a tad coming in there, and then across here. So we're going to kind of treat this like as if we are going to paint flesh on a face. I'm going to do a couple of coats on that. Okay, so I'm kind of happy with that now, so you can kind of see the shade into there, and then you've got the highlight there. So now we're going to add a Tusk Fair, Tusk or Fair into the mix. So what we're going to do, first of all, we're going to go 50-50 of Tusk Fair with the, I've forgotten what it's called, the Waz Daka Red. So 50-50. So I'm just giving it that little red tinge. And again, I'm going for a water effect. So if you can see from the tissue, I'm kind of seeing it just spread out. So not too thin, not too thick. So we're not going to go right to the edges, uh, right to the um, into the shadow bits. So we want some of that red to come through. So if you can just about see that, you've got a nice, let's see if I can adjust the camera a little bit. Kind of got that beautiful shade. So we're gonna 
in a sec. We're going to darken that up underneath. But what we're going to aim for now, we're just going to add, start adding a little bit of white down onto this part here. Not too much, just a little bit of ivory white into the mix. No, we're not. We're going to go neat now of the Tuscal fur into the mix. Okay, so next up we're going to be using the some ivory. So we're just going to put a tad tap of that into the mix, not too much. And now we want to think about just doing the edges. And you can see I've got a little backup brush. All this is just a damp brush, and this is just going to help me guide that paint to where I need it to go. See that coming in. I'm going to add a little bit more bone to it. Bit, a little bit more ivory into the mix. So going back in with the corn red. So what we're going to do next. So with that corn red, we're just going to water that down. And then we're going to go in with dry bark. And you're going to add a little bit to it. And we're just going to darken that up. Not too much. Now what we're going to go for underneath. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit more dry bark into that. Again, not much. And what I want to do is just aim for the final dark bits. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to look about pulling out that cloth. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to the ivory, and then we're going to add that so to our to our little mix we had earlier on, where we had the the uh, tusk or fur. I'm just going to add that into there <clears throat> a little bit more. Like so. And this point that we're going to pull out, let's pull that out of the way. All I'm using, by the way, is a size one. So you kind of got like a little scratch mark just going across there. So maybe we're just maybe a little bit torn. We can darken it up just a tad as well, just give it a little bit of shade. So what we could do is go back in with a darker brown. And then all we want to do is just like if we was going to do we was going to do like the chipping effect. Just add a bit of dark into it, just so it gives it that little bit of added texture. And that's it. A coin loin cloth done. Really hope you enjoyed this so far. Uh, Gaz Golf for myself was an awesome model to paint, but 
very, very soon is the next episode coming up and how I painted Gasgol.